to my podcast. This is episode three. Wow, this is my third time doing this. I'm getting kind of good too, which I think. But today's episode, well, first of all, let me give y'all some backstory to yesterday and today for me. I've been feeling condemnation heavy because for one, if I'm being completely transparent, I've been on social media um, a lot more than I should have been lately, right? And so, I feel like part of the reason why I have is because I just got off of a fast a few weeks ago from fasting from social media. So, at this point, it's like, you got a problem. (laughs) No, I don't. But um, I definitely was convicted about the fact that I was on social media in recent times way more than I was in God's presence, which happens like we're human so there's that and I'm not afraid to share it because I am human I'm not perfect and I don't want anybody to think that I'm perfect so there's that but when I ask for forgiveness and Satan starts bringing his little ugly behind around trying to condemn me that's when I got a problem so that just fits in with the theme of this week's podcast episode because Yeah, and I feel like the reason why God allowed this, because anything that happens to us that involves the enemy in any way, God has to allow that. Because God's not going to let anybody touch his children. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, any parent is not going to let, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, yeah, I was feeling condemned. And God reminded me of the fact that condemnation does not come from him the bible tells us that in christ our sins have been forgiven and there is no condemnation so that lets me know that condemnation comes from the pits of hell but we're gonna get right into this episode i'm gonna pray first because as y'all can see i'm ready (laughs) i am ready for it because the devil has been trying to play with me and yeah i'm just ready for this episode so we're gonna get into prayer and yeah that's it dear heavenly father i thank you for the opportunity to speak truth and life into your people i thank you for trusting me enough to do so i invite your holy spirit in to lead me and guide me into the right words to say because only you know who this message will and could reach surround us with your presence O lord in jesus holy name we pray amen all right so let's get right into it because like i said i'm not wasting no time the devil got something coming when it comes to me. Do you feel me? Like, I'm not... I I know y'all can hear it in my voice. I'm irritated. <laughs> because, like, no. Like, all right. All right. You want to come for me? I'm going to come for you. That's how we can do that. So, I just want to start by giving some background as to who the devil is. His original name was Lucifer. Um, and Lucifer means the bearer of light. So in heaven, he was a guardian cherub. And a guardian cherub is like a guardian, guardian angel, basically. So a cherub is an angel. So he was a guardian angel in heaven. And basically, Lucifer was so impressed with his own beauty and intelligence and power and position and that he began to desire for himself to be honored and things like that above God. And so God won't have it. Not to mention the fact that Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 13 through 17 lets us know that Satan was in the garden trying to persuade, well, ultimately he did persuade um, Eve to eat the fruit. And so that ultimately led up to him being kicked out of heaven. And the reason why the enemy doesn't necessarily like us at all is because when it came to us being forgiven of our sins and things like that, he wasn't necessarily forgiven. He was kicked out of heaven. When it comes to condemnation, the reason why he tries so hard to condemn us is because 
he knows that we are forgiving and so he tries to make us feel guilty and ashamed of the things that we've done when Christ has already forgiven us which is why the Bible tells us like I said that there is no condemnation because God knows that the devil is going to try to condemn us because that's that's just his character he comes to still kill and destroy and that just simply means that if he can rob you of peace when it comes to the fact that Christ is forgiving you for the things that you've done and the sins that you've committed if he can rob you of that peace which is what condemnation is then ultimately he's going to do it like if he feels like he can get in to your mind in any open window any open door he's going to take the opportunity because that's just his character and the bible tells us in first peter chapter 5 verse 8 to be of sober mind be alert and be of sober mind because satan comes to devour us if we're not of sober mind and a lion can easily devour you if you're not protected by anything so while you feel like life is all good but need to smoke and drink every day just to keep your mind off of the actual pain that you feel the devil is waiting to devour you like while we're using coping mechanisms while we're like for instance for me all on social media and things like that not staying of sober mind the devil is prowling and looking for an opportunity to devour us any chance that he gets so when i was feeling condemned and guilty well even before that when i was convicted for being on social media more than i was in god's presence in recent times me being on social media even after that after asking for forgiveness and things like that gave the enemy a window to creep in and ultimately try to condemn me you know what i'm saying like saying things and putting stuff in my head like oh so you just gonna you just gonna get back on social media like you know what i'm saying like he should never even forgave you while it's like you're this and this and that like the devil <laughs> be thinking he's slick like he'll try to come in and say all types of stuff and i love the bible so much because it reminds us that we don't have to we don't have to take that we don't have to take that at all we are saved by christ our sins are indeed forgiven when we repent and so we don't have to allow the lies from the enemy to torment us any longer and for me that's freedom that that scripture is freedom for me because i've been dealing with the spirit of condemnation since i got on my journey with god and it's because god had to to show me and introduce me to that particular scripture and i feel like there's a scripture and i'm getting a little off topic but it's okay it's gonna all come together i feel like there's a scripture for every single season in our life and every single season in our relationship with God. And in order for me to learn that particular scripture, I needed to go through that particular season in my life. That's deep. <laughs> That's deep. In order for me to learn that particular scripture, I had to go through that particular season in my life. In order For us to learn the scripture about how Christ raises people from the dead and and makes the blind people see again. We have to go through things like that in our life. In order for me and us to like, you know, know about the fact that our sins are forgiven and that Christ died for our sins, we have to go through that. And I feel like a lot of times and even earlier today, God kept speaking to me about trouble. You know, when you're in trouble, I kept seeing the word trouble and it wasn't necessarily about me being in trouble in a sense, but when trouble comes, you know what I'm saying? Um, if you have the Youth Virgin Bible app, you know that today, which is <laughs> August 3rd, 2022, um, today's scripture was basically about the fact that we are going to experience trouble in this lifetime. 
but take heart because God has overcome the world. Christ has overcome the world. And once I actually read that entire passage of scripture, not even just that one verse, but that whole passage, it stood out to me the fact that when the Bible tells us that we will face trouble, he didn't say that he overcame trouble, although he did, but that he knew that that wasn't the root of it. Trouble isn't the root of it. He overcame the world opposed to just overcoming that trouble that we're in. You get what I'm saying? And so he didn't just see the trouble that we would experience when he died for us. He saw that the world needed help. He didn't just see one person's situation or two people's situation. He saw the fact that we were all God's children and he saw the fact that we were ultimately innocent before we got on this earth we were innocent when we were born we were innocent and we didn't necessarily commit sin but because sin was in our bloodline we were going to face trouble and so instead of christ just coming to conquer trouble he came to conquer the world and that's a blessing because That just lets me know that no matter what trouble we face, this year, next year, 10 years from now, whatever trouble the world faces 100 years from now, Christ has died to overcome that trouble as well. Oh, I'm getting emotional. (laughs) Like that, that just makes me feel good for sure. Because yeah, a lot of people, I'm getting off topic, but it's okay because this is going to help somebody. And I know that this is all flowing in from the Holy Spirit. So you will have people in your life that seem, oh God, (laughs) that seem so strong. You get what I'm saying? And they, they can be spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, but we all are human. And I feel like a lot of times people put the leaders on a pedestal because we're supposed to be so strong. But we need shoulders to lean on too. <laughs> like for real. And um, a lot of times, well, even in recent times, God has been revealing the fact to me that it's okay to be vulnerable. Because I've had this thought in my head that if I'm helping people, I got to be strong. We we got to be strong. Like we, we cannot be out here lacking. <laughs> like no. But... It's okay to text people and ask people like, hey, I need prayer. And at one point, that was so hard for me to do because it's like I'm supposed to be the one that's praying for everybody. But God took me out of my comfort zone. And even today, I was texting people, asking people like, can y'all pray for me? Because I've been feeling under attack because I haven't really been responsible. And even after I asked for forgiveness, um... The enemy is trying to condemn me, you know? And so, yeah, I said all this to say the leaders need prayer too. So whoever your leader is, whoever your pastor is, whoever your therapist is, whoever your 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 mom, your dad, whoever is strong in your eyes, pray for them. No, for real. <laughs> like, pray for them. Pause this. Go pray. Like, for real. But, yeah. To get back on topic, the enemy tries to, no, he doesn't try to, he does. That's who he is. That's what he do. He comes in and tries to make himself at home in our mind. But it lets me know that that scripture about your mind being renewed is not vain. None of the, none of the Bible is vain. But that particular scripture has deep meaning in it in my eyes. Because if you are not constantly having your mind renewed, the enemy is going to, first of all, he attacks daily. Never feel like the devil is not after you daily. As long as you getting up doing what you need to do daily, he going to be after you daily. Because I think of it like this. If you're on, when, when I was in the world, right? 
I was doing exactly what the enemy wanted me to be doing. So, you know, he wasn't attacking me like that. You know what I'm saying? But now that I'm in Christ and I'm in God's will and I'm in purpose and I'm in my calling and I'm trying to do right, he going to be attacking me from every corner. And I think of it as like playing football. You're not going to be tackled by somebody that's on your team. So if you're feeling warfare and things like that, just know that you're on the right team. (laughs) God is not going to let anything, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So there's that. But if you are feeling any type of warfare, spiritually, mentally, it's because you're on the winning team. And I'm not saying that you're not going to feel peace when you come in a relationship with God because you, you definitely are. God has peace that surpasses all understanding. So you definitely are going to be at peace when you come in a relationship with God. But warfare comes behind that because the enemy doesn't like when we, you know, get in a relationship with God because he's a hater. But there, there's that. But you will indeed have peace. But if you know, the Bible tells us that we know right from wrong, right? We know right from wrong. So if you are doing something that you feel in your heart is wrong but you continue to do it and you feel nothing behind that you need to check and see what team you are like if you feel nothing when you sin because when you come in a relationship with christ you will indeed sin people try to make it seem like you just won't sin and you life is going to be peaches and cream it gets a little harder yeah Because you have to carry your cross daily. It gets a little harder. (laughs) If not a lot. And so if you don't feel anything. Any type of conviction before you sin. Any type of conviction after you sin. Any type of urge to repent. You need to check and see what team you're on. The enemy tries his hardest to knock us off of our path. When you get in a relationship with God. He tries his hardest to convince us that, well, I mean, if life is going to be hard, why won't you just go back into the world? At least you were enjoying it. Like, he will literally try his absolute hardest to make you go back into the world. He is going to try his hardest to make you get back with that ex. He's going to try his hardest. To make you go back to that place that you left. He's going to make. He's going to try his hardest. To make you go back to that coping mechanism. Which, whether it was sex. Or drugs. Or alcohol. Or the strip club. A particular place. A particular person. He's going to try his absolute hardest. To get you to go back to that lifestyle. Because he knows that if you reach your full potential in Christ. He is done for. The Bible tells him, tells us that he has already been defeated, but he knows for a fact that if you find out who you are in Christ, he done lost one. He done lost a couple because God uses us to go out into the world to get and collect other souls, get other people to come into a relationship with him, just like Jesus did, you know. And the Bible tells us that Jesus told us that He wants us to go out and do even greater things, you get what I'm saying, than he did. And if the devil see you, one thing about it, and I've seen this multiple times on my journey. And like I said, my journey's only been a year, so bear with me. But I've saw this a lot of times on my journey. A lot of times, the enemy has more faith in you than you do. And, whoo, (laughs) that's that's who the enemy has more faith in you than you do he trying to stop you because he know you can do it wow okay he's trying to stop you because he knows you can do it he's trying to make the spirit of laziness come over you because he know you can do it he's trying to make the spirit of condemnation come over you Because he knows that you can overcome this sin. He's trying to make Jesus. He's trying to make you go back into the world. Because he knows that you're so far out from it. That if you go one more inch. He's not going to be able to touch you. 
the devil knows who we are in Christ. And a lot of times he knows who we are in Christ way more than we do. Which is very sad and also very scary. Not that we should fear the enemy, but we should definitely reevaluate how we look at ourselves. We should definitely reevaluate what the Bible says, what God says about us. Because there's no reason why the enemy should be having more faith in you than you do. And I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I'm talking to me. Like, y'all, it get hard. Can I be honest? It gets hard. It it does. But if you let the enemy win, yeah, I'm going I'm to just leave it at that. If you let the enemy feel like he got one up on you, I'm going to just leave it at that. Because... No matter how hard it gets, we should never, ever allow the enemy to get that much leverage to make us feel like anything, to make us feel like we not doing enough, to make us feel like we'll never be able to do it, to, none of that. Y'all, the world is so deep and insane right now, like so deep. It's a lot to take in and I feel like the reason why I was just like not feeling it today is because not only was I feeling condemned but whenever I would get on social media it was never nothing positive and it's not like I was on there looking for just you know scoping out for positivity but at the same time like I'm growing, and it's crazy for me to even say this because, like I said, I was on social media way more than I was reading my word lately, and so I feel like this feeling that I have is definitely from God because I'm having like a divine discontent when it comes to social media. I don't like it, <laughs> and it's like even though I get on social media, and this is not about social media, but if you got a testimony, tell it. But <laughs> yeah, when I get on social media, it's like, okay, I'm on social media. Like, this is a form of entertainment, I guess. So I'm here, right? And even though, like, I'm on there posting things about God and, you know, just trying to be that holy girl, right? Somewhere along the line, <laughs> it's just just lust or just addiction or just a lot it's a lot and i it's been a nasty taste in my mouth and i'm not even trying to like you know knock social media because i feel like if it's used the right way that it can get a lot of stuff done and i've definitely been asking god like god if i'm gonna be on social media i really want to be using this the right way I really, like, I went through the other day and was, like, unfollowing a whole bunch of people because I just, it's a lot. And I get a little hesitant when I'm unfollowing people because it's, like, what I'm posting is about God. I don't want people to miss the word because of the stuff that they post. You get what I'm saying? Like, it, it's a struggle because it's, like, I don't want to make this about me feeling comfortable you know if i'm gonna go on the battlefield i want to go on the battlefield ready and i feel like in this day and age especially when you're trying to do something positive on social media getting on social media can be a battlefield because you're trying to do what your calling is you're trying to you know be in your purpose but you also have these different temptations being thrown at you every time you scroll or even if you just get on there to post something and get off there's still going to be some type of temptation on social media and i feel like us christians it's hard it's hard trying to connect with people on social media and social media is big major nowadays right it's really hard to do what you need to do without being tempted, without being condemned, 
without getting off track, without getting distracted. And it's like, we be trying so hard. I know I do. Trying so hard to just go on there, post something, or try to connect with people. And it's like, for me, even my notifications on every social media app that I have is off. So it's like, if somebody texts me about a a coaching session or someone like text me about needing prayer or anything anything positive you know what I'm saying I'm not able to see it because I cut my notification off because I don't want to be tempted to just get on social media and just scroll yeah it's it's a lot (laughs) it's a lot Satan since I'm talking about social media he tries no he doesn't try he does social media is his target nowadays social media music and and entertainment the inter- the, the, the entertainment industry what we watch on tv and stuff like that is his main target because that's the closest thing to our mind that's why it's very important to guard your ear gates and your eye gates because it's the closest thing to your mind and the devil if he can get your mind he got you that's why it's very important, like I said before, to renew your mind constantly. Allow God to renew your mind. Allow God to help you unlearn the things that you've learned over your lifespan. You know, to allow God to feed you new knowledge and to empty out all those lies that we've been believing like so for so long. The enemy as long as he can go undetected, he's going to continue doing what he's doing. And nowadays, it's not even the fact that he's going undetected because people see it. He's going ignored nowadays. He's not even going undetected. He's going ignored. And as a body of Christ, we don't need to ignore it no more. I'm going to say it. <laughs> We've been ignoring it too. Not even just unbelievers or people that are in the world the ones that are following christ have definitely been ignoring it as well because we see it and we're like okay this is just what they doing no it shouldn't be like that we shouldn't be scared to get in the gap you know those are still god's children those are still the people that he wants us to save he don't want us to go out and save the people that's already saved that's not how that works he wants us to go out and get the people that are in it the ones that are participating in it, the ones that are stuck in it, the ones that at least feel like they're stuck in it, regardless if they want to come out or not. That's another thing. It don't matter if these people want to come out or not. We still need to be pursuing them in a loving way so that they can be able to see, okay, this person's cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Even if they're still in the world, we shouldn't write them off and be like, nah, they, they ain't never going to change. Because how do you know? Ooh, this is so off topic, but God is doing something. (laughs) How do you know? So you're just not going to pursue them. You're not going to pray for them because you feel like they they too stuck. Ain't no way. I know for a fact there are people in this world that will look at me two years from now. I mean, two years ago and say, ain't no way. Ain't no way. The way I was wilding in college, me dropping out and all that stuff. Anyway, speaking of which, y'all, as y'all know, I went to esthetician school, right? And God spoke to me um, a few weeks ago. Let me just tell y'all, this is so off topic, but I have to include it because I love y'all and we here. So a few weeks ago, um, at the end of June, I believe, um, God was that's not even a few weeks ago that was like a month ago (laughs) but God spoke to me through a um I don't think it was a sermon I think it was just a um a video from Sarah Jakes that I was watching and he spoke to me about getting back in the aesthetics field and I'm like God wait 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 like I thought you didn't want me to do this no more right so I'm like okay if this is something that you want me to do I need you to confirm it to me because although my discernment is like maturing I still need clarity that's just me I need clarity 
in everything. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, I need confirmation. I need clarity. Like if this is something you want me to do, right? Completely forgot about it. Three weeks later in July, um, I get a text message from one of my um, instructors at beauty school, right? She texts me. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to text her back because I'm not doing this no more, right? So I don't text her back. And then the next day, she calls me. And I'm like, ain't no way. <laughs> like, ain't no way. Like, bro, I, like, what do I do? And then I just felt an unction. I felt an urge from the Holy Spirit. And I know it was the Holy Spirit because I can hear the sheep know his voice, okay? So I just felt the Holy Spirit saying, answer the phone. And so I'm like, oh, I'm going to answer. So I answered. And she's like, hey, like, I've been trying to get a hold of you. Like, I'm going to pay for your test because I never took my second test because I felt like God didn't, you know. Yeah, because you need to take both of your tests in order to get your license. But it's like, if God don't want me to do this no more, why, do, why am I taking my second test, right? So I didn't take it. She's like, I'm going to pay for your second test, first of all. Okay, let me tell it and I'm going to get into it because, yeah, I'm getting excited. She was like, okay, I'm going to pay for your test. And woo, woo, woo. and I was like, are you serious? She was like, yeah, like I'm going to pay for it. Woo, woo, woo. That leads me to my first point. God is going to provide for you. He's going to send you provision for whatever it is he wants you to do. I promise you, you're not going to have to go searching for anything. You're not going to have to go scrambling for nothing. He's going to provide for you if he wants you to do it. So that was my first, my first green flag, right? And so then she was like, I'm like, okay, how am I going to get to this test? Well, first of all, you have to pack like um, facial stuff and stuff like that whenever you're doing your second test because it's like you're um, demonstrating, dem- oh God, <laughs> demonstrating a facial, right? So I'm like, okay, how am I going to get all this stuff? I don't have a car, right? So I'm like, okay. I just quit my job. I don't have Uber money to even get up here. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like I don't have Uber money to go to the school to, you know? And so she's like, I'm going to come get you um, for your test. Oh, back, back story. Um, the Uber money that I got to get up to the school so that I could pack my bag came from my sister, which I was stressing about that too. But when you have faith in God, he's going to provide for you. So this whole story, God was providing. So that's how I knew that he wanted me to, you know, there's that. So, um, fast forward, I took my test yesterday. Yay. And I passed y'all. I freaking passed. So I'm a licensed esthetician now. God is good. And I thought he didn't want me to do this anymore, (laughs) but he he favored me to get back in the field, y'all. So I'm a licensed esthetician. Isn't that cool? I'm a life coach. I'm a licensed esthetician. I'm a Christian black woman who's single. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, but y'all, yeah, that's how he favored me. But let's get back into it because <laughs> I'm rambling. Y'all know I be recording at night, so I be tired. But anyways. To get back on topic, (laughs) there are people that literally don't pursue people that are in this world. And when I say pursue, I hope y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm saying like people don't even try to pray for those people. They don't even try to send them a, 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 a scripture. They don't even try to invite them to Bible study. They don't even try to send their live video to them they don't even try to send their podcast link to them you get what i'm saying they they count them out but that's the thing god like the worst of the worst gotta see you in the gap and be like look i want you (laughs) that one right there like and it's like if god is tricking those people who are we to write those people off oh the holy spirit is speak i hope y'all know um this is the holy spirit speaking (laughs) like who are we to write these people off the the people in jail the people that people forget about right who are we the homeless people right the ones that nobody wants to get close by who are we to write off 
God's children. There's a verse in the Bible that tells us who are we to judge someone else's servant? That's deep. Who are we to be out here condemning other people? Who are we to be out here stealing, killing, and destroying? Come on, Holy Spirit. Stealing, killing, and destroying people's chances of salvation because you don't want to pursue them. God placed you there for a reason, but you don't want to pursue them because, oh, they act like this, this, and this, or they do this, this, and this, or they look like this, and this, and this, or they came from this, and this, and this, or because they're black, or because they're white. Like, who? Jesus, we need to reevaluate. We need to, as the body of Christ, we need to reevaluate ourselves for real. We be tripping. And I know there's a reason why the Holy Spirit said, kill, still kill and destroy. Because that is that is characteristic of Satan. Those are characteristics of the devil. So if you are out here robbing people of their salvation because of your preferences and your comfort zone, you are displaying characteristics of Satan. There you go. We talking about the devil, ain't we? Like, there's that. And a lot of people are not going to agree with that. But at the same time, you have to take it for what it is. That's that's the word. Satan's characteristic. He lies. He steals. He kills. And he destroys. So if you do any of those things. And you consider yourself someone that is going after God. But you're writing off people of God because of how they, you know, like the outer appearance. God don't judge based on the outer appearance. He judges based on the heart. And if he wants us to be more like him, why are we judging people by their outer appearance? <laughs> Y'all, I'm getting hot too. Y'all are hearts and chests and sweating and beating. Mine too. Because this, this is not just me. Up here. I'm the vessel. So anything the Holy Spirit speaks to me, it go out of my mouth, but it comes back in my ears because I have to be able to pick those things up as well. So I'm not just ministering, (laughs) ministering, that's a a complicated word, ministering to y'all, ministering to my folks, but y'all, I think that's it. I think that's episode three. I'm not sure. But I think that is episode three. <laughs> yeah. All right. So don't let the devil. More of the story on today's podcast. Don't let the devil try to condemn you. Don't let the devil try to rob you of the fact that you have been forgiven. Even after you commit a sin. And if you commit that sin again. And you repent. You're going to be forgiven again. Do not let the devil try to condemn you. First of all. Don't try to give yourself leeway to be sinning. And then you know you're going to be forgiven. Because God looks at the heart. Period. But do not let the enemy try to rob you of the joy that comes after being forgiven. Our sins in Christ have been forgiven forgiven because of what christ did on the cross for us for us don't let the enemy try to rob you of your joy because he 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 hating (laughs) like don't and always remember that we fight off the enemy with the word of god we don't fight the enemy with the same weapons that we fight with in this world you hear what i'm saying and so yeah i think that's all god has for us for this session y'all this is a lot. This is intense. <laughs> but um, remember that God has plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. He has perfect and, and pleasing will, wills and plans <laughs> for our lives. But I'm going to close in prayer. I'm going to leave y'all with some info and then we can dip. Dear Heavenly Father, we honor you, we glorify you, and we thank you for yet another great session. 
Thank you for using me daily to speak to your people, Lord. I pray that the ones going to bed have a peaceful night of sleep. I pray that the ones driving would make it to their destination safely. And I pray that the ones ready to seek you would be filled with wisdom, strength, and confidence to do so. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Alright, guys. Don't forget, and I say this in every episode, and I'm going to keep saying it. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget if you're interested in building a relationship with God but need help with it, um, y'all can DM me on Instagram. And I'm talking about social media. But y'all see y'all see, I'm trying to do <laughs> I'm trying. Period. Progression and not perfection. So yeah, if y'all need help getting in a relationship with God and you need advice on it or if you have a relationship with God and you just need someone to talk to about it you need some type of wisdom and I've only been on my journey for one year but I know that no I don't know I know that the anointing that God has placed on my life is not void so with that being said y'all can text me on Instagram um my Instagram's in the description box below and it's somewhere on the screen look for it look for it boom you found it so yeah also share 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 not for my sake but for the sake of getting your loved ones closer to god i love y'all we is 46 minutes in i might cut this short but (laughs) i love y'all good night we out